Changing Landscapes Vancouver Island is brought to you in part by Roadrunner Magazine. Roadrunner is the most comprehensive resource for motorcycle touring and travel. Read. Discover. Ride. This week we're back on the water. Well, kind of. We'll be loading the bikes onto the Francis Barkley and sailing down the Barkley Sound to the small coastal community of Banfield. It's a quirky little place with a cool boardwalk, a state-of-the-art marine biological center, and some incredible west coast scenery. Oh yeah, and more whales. Vancouver Island, British Columbia. That's a little island off the west coast of Canada. It's our home, and what a place it is. My name is Scott Wilson, and I'd like you to join me and my good buddy Dominic Medlinski as we explore our island. Dominic's a landscape artist, and I like to film. And together, we like riding bikes, so we're going to take you for a ride. There'll be stunning scenery. Lively locals, a bit of wildlife, and perhaps even a tipple or two. If you haven't checked out Vancouver Island yet, then here's your chance. This is Changing Landscapes Vancouver Island. Early morning to rise. Mr. Modlinski. Good morning. How are you doing? It's not quite uh, South America, but we are getting lifted on the ship crane, on the ship, and going down to Bonfield. Pretty awesome. It was another spectacular morning, mist and all. We were at the Lady Rose Marine headquarters to load up our bikes for the sail down Barkley Sound to Bamfield. We were sailing on the Francis Barkley, another freighter that delivers supplies to outposts down the inlet and to Banfield itself. As we pulled out of port, past our previous night's accommodation, the floating B&B tugboat, the Songhe, I couldn't help feeling invigorated as we were sailing again into the white. While Dominic grabbed some brekkie, I slid up to the bridge to film our departure. I loved watching the skipper in action as he guided us out into the sound. Where are we heading now, Shanghai? We are heading down the Barkley Sound, Francis Barkley, down to Banfield. Banfield, fishing town, west coast, Vancouver Island. All right. As we sailed down the sound, the forests started to present themselves as the mist began to lift. A magical time of day. All right, so we're here this morning with Captain John of uh, Lady Rose Marine. And uh, we're on board the Francis, uh, Francis Barkley, right? That's correct. So and this is basically a working freighter? It is, carry uh, passengers and freight. Passengers and freight. Two pounds yeah. Okay, so like today, uh, a typical stop will be what? Uh, today we have uh, a stop in uh, New Chuckles and Inlet, Kildonan Post Office. Uh, we also have a stop today in a little place called Haggard's Cove. Uh -huh. And from Haggard's Cove, we'll go on to Banfield. On to Banfield. And then basically an uh, offload, and then uh, you guys trip on back up to Port Alberni yeah. tonight? Uh, two stops at Banfield, and uh, we return to Port Alberni probably around 4 35. The sailing was reminiscent of our time on the Uchuck 3, 
and further drove home the point of how remote some of these island communities must have been back in the day. It seemed the further we ventured down the sound, the brighter the skies became, and dotting the waters were remote floating homes tethered to the shores by docks. Then we made our first stop. Hello! As we pulled up to a dock much the way a bus pulls into a bus station. Are you official greener? I am. You are? Yes. All right. Passengers disembarked, then we were off to our next stop. A pretty unique one at that. Canada's only floating post office. Then again, why not? We had floating homes, why not a floating post office? From there it was off to Haggard's Cove. As we offloaded some cargo and just as on the Uchuk 3, we saw the crew kick it into gear as supplies were offloaded the marine way. As we sailed the final leg, we were treated to some more wild west coast with, well, you guessed it, more whales. Okay, so we're up on the bow here with Mike. And Mike, what, uh, what do you do on board? I'm the deckhand. Deckhand? Little of everything. Little of everything, okay. Yeah. How long you been on the uh, Francis Barkley? Uh, this is my first season. First season? About five months now. Enjoying it? Oh yeah. yeah. Pretty sweet, eh? Yeah. Yeah? Get any better. We cruised into West Banfield and the Francis Barkley sounded her horn to let the locals know we'd arrived. It was kind of neat. The Barkley's in town with her assortment of supplies, mail and passengers just like in the old days. And sure enough, the locals started to make their way down to the jetty to take care of business or just to say hi. Once the supplies have been offloaded, we cast off for East Banfield, our stop. On the way, we passed marine research vessels, fishing lodges, and of course the water tax. In East Banfield, the crew got back to work and offloaded more supplies and our bikes. It's a funny thing to watch your motorcycle move to someone else's command. Okay, Darren, this is my baby. I'll take care of it. Take care of her. Man, you guys are pros now. You know, this one, you know, it's all right. You don't have to worry about it. You can drop this one. No, we're not too worried. <laughs> They're not worried about this one, Dominic. I'll get out of the way here. Awesome. Then the Barclay left us and headed back up the inlet to Port Alberni. <laughs> So, we're in East Bamfield, but our accommodation was on the other side. Hmm, time to call a cab. Kinda cool, arriving at your lodgings, the Imperial Eagle Lodge, by water taxi. So this is the taxi service in Bamfield. We were just in East, East Bamfield, and we're going to West Bamfield. And it'll take us uh, about 30 seconds. About 30 seconds, but it's kind of cool. You go up to the diner, you get on the phone, and uh, what's your name? Mark. And Mark, Mark comes over in his water taxi, and uh, and this is it. I gotta tell you, a day like today is quite nice. Middle of winter, I don't know.
All paintings created during the filming of this series are available for purchase on Dominic's website at www.paintingjourneys.com. Take a landscape artist from Canada, Dominic Medlinski. Then take his buddy, Scott Wilson, a travel writer who never shuts up. Put them on motorcycles, send them to Bolivia, and what do you get? Well, you get one heck of an adventure. Follow along as they rip through changing landscapes, from the salt flats to the Andes, and the Alta Plano to the Amazon. This is Changing Landscapes Bolivia. Hello, this is Zen Guy and the Nomadic Bull, and we're on the boardwalk down by the sea. You see this right here? We're in East Banfield. No, we're not. We're in West Banfield. Sorry, because East Banfield is over there across the water. Pretty cool place, eh, Zen Guy? It's amazing, spectacular. So, what are we up to today? Well, we just came off the Francis Barkley. We're gonna check out the Brandy's Beach. We got Brady's. Brady's Beach. We're gonna check the Marine Sciences Center in Banfield. Yeah, Banfield Marine Science Center, and we're gonna cruise the boardwalk because this apparently is the last section of the Queen's Highway. Okay, maintained by the D Department of Highways, and this is a cool place. So, great episode. We trekked over to Brady's Beach so Dominic could paint, and what a beautiful little beach it was. And sure enough, he found a spot and got to it. Finding a right composition uh, is a very important aspect of a successful painting. I take a fair enough time walking up and down the beach, uh, looking for uh, right angles, right overlaps, and of course, a right light. The light changes quite often, so you have to be prepared to memorize the light and follow through all the way to the end of the painting. Uh, many mistakes that art students do, they get frustrated mid through the painting and change the light, and then, you know, the painting doesn't make much sense. So you have to kind of believe in yourself that you're gonna capture what you are attracted to in the first place. A morning light is amazing. Uh, it creates silhouettes, soft underglows, uh, light glows from the, from the surfaces. It's a, it's a magical time to paint. It's not a, it's not a mid light. Mid, midday light is very harsh. Um, I don't like painting in the middle day. Usually the mornings and then late afternoons are usually the best time to paint and also to photograph. Well, another beautiful painting out of the way. I guess it was time to head back to the boardwalk. There are a few communities in British Columbia that sport a boardwalk, but Bamfields has to be one of the nicest. And part of that is because it serves a purpose. It not only connects properties, but allows folks to go about their business using the boardwalk as a means of travel. Whether it's to the store, the Coast Guard, or the government jetty, the boardwalk is an official rite of passage. <laughs> and it's really kind of cool. With the planters' boxes here and there, and, and the cat house, and the different buildings on display, it's kind of like a living museum. Okay, so here we are on the boardwalk. And this is uh, West Banfield? West Banfield. Okay, over there, about 300 feet, is East Banfield. <laughs> yes, and we took the water taxi over. And, you know, the first thing we decided to do was walk the boardwalk. And sure enough, you know, because we wanted to meet some of the local flavor. And here we are with Rose. <laughs> and uh, Rose, what do you do? I am the postmistress of Banfield. The postmistress of Banfield. Yep. And on a really good day, you'll catch me scooping ice cream in the store next door all summer long. Oh, double dip. Double dipping. Double dipping. <laughs> okay. So we got to get some trivia out of the way for you first off. Is that Even though this is a boardwalk, this is the Department of... Highways. Here we are. So you got to watch out for moving vehicles? Mostly wheelbarrows. Wheelbarrows. And bears on occasion. 
and bears. I have had to turn around and go the long way to work because a bear has been busy picking berries right yeah. now. Picking berries. Okay, or you got to watch out for these guys. Then you have Cooper. Oh, that's Cooper? That's Cooper. Hey, we don't pay Cooper, eh? That wasn't on cue. He just cruised <laughs> through, okay? So, all right, but anyway, you, you were telling us before that uh, you came out here for just a, a little jaunt and then... I came down originally to teach a, a weekend workshop in drawing and painting for uh, one of the colleges in Port Alberta, North Island College. This was a long time ago. Okay. And uh, I was quite horrified because I hadn't taught adults before. I was only teaching children, so I was yeah. a bit nervous. And when I got down here, I was pretty amazed at how few people were down here and how the mood it was. But uh, 34 years later, I'm still here. How many years? 34. 34 years. So she came down to, all right. <laughs> for a now, weekend. <laughs> now, for a weekend. Okay, a 34-year weekend. Yep. Okay, this is good. Now... And, and you, the sound quality here might be a little disruptive because every day there's like a happy hour that goes on for two or three, and you call it the... Uh, yeah. We have been likened to the goats on the roof in Coons. The goats on the roof. Okay, substitute, yeah, <laughs> the local citizens for goats, and here we go. So It's just a gathering of people that get together, they come and buy their, you know, groceries and their beer for the evening or whatever they're going to enjoy, and then all the news of the day gets moved back and forth, fresh rumors get started. Rumors? Some local gossip gets squashed, some gets reborn, you know. Well, you're in the post office, so you're kind of like, you got your finger on the get pulse. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Local know-it-all. <laughs> so, so you enjoy your job? I love my job. Yeah? You love Banfield? I love Banfield. So what is it about Banfield you love? It's probably the greatest extension of family that a person could find. Really? In a neighborhood of strangers, visitors, tourists, you name it, we get everything here. You know, we've got a million students that come all the time over there, which adds a, a unique flavor. Yeah. Um, it's a place that's big on education and revival of spirit. I think that would be the best way to sum it up. Re revival of spirit. When wow, people come okay. here in the summer as a tourist, they get here and they're exhausted by either the crappy logging road that we have, which yep. I quite love because mm -hmm. it's an hour and a half of peace and quiet. Nobody's asking any questions. It's like oh. Queen's X. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they get down here, where they're, however they got here, and they realize that it's probably one of the most beautiful places they have ever been to yeah. in their entire lives. Yeah. And something just lets go and I've seen people arrive here for an hour on the boat, and they don't want to leave. Yeah, there, there is definitely something about this place. Like, there's no—I mean, this is my third time here, and every time I come here, I—I I don't know—I just get excited walking down this boardwalk, and then seeing the congregation. Um, it's pretty rare today when you see this kind of congregation of people. Like everyone here, it, what, you, population 150 I, uh, here. It's, we're about that now. We used to be around 300, but over the years, it's just gradually with the changing economy and people having to move away to either you know raise their families or, or jobs that yeah. called them away. So we're losing a bit. Um, our age demographic is changing. We're all a little bit older. Yeah. You know, when I arrived here. You know, 34 years ago, it was a major hubbub down here. Like, it was fishing. It was, fishing it was, it was busy, eh? Busy logging. Yeah. Just, you know, the store went just about around the clock. We were so busy with everything. Yeah. But it's gradually, you know, declined, and it's... It's not hard to find an excuse to stay here. Well, it's peaceful. I can't think of any place I'd rather live. Yeah. I really can't. Well, you know, what Anne's, uh, uh, sorry, Rose is really trying to say is um, there's a poker game tonight. <laughs> okay, and tonight's a special night, eh, because it's not just a regular poker night. We have, it's a birthday Alex's buy in tonight. It's birthday pot, yeah. It's the birth, Alice's birthday pot tonight. So uh, that starts at what time? It usually starts at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yeah. All right, so we got to get going because we're going to miss the poker. Uh, you got to have buy in ready. Yep. Buy in ready. Be there at 8. <laughs> Be there at 8. Okay, Rose, thank you very much. Expertly planned tours complete with maps, GPS files, and area information. Roadrunner is the most comprehensive resource for motorcycle touring and travel.
read, discover, ride. If you're enjoying the show and would like to contribute to future free programming, why not become a patron at patreon.com forward slash nomadic bull. Thanks for watching. Well, it looked like time for another cab. So we called Mark and he showed up with his dog, Beth. And we loaded up and headed back over to East Bamfield. All right, Mark, so what do we owe you? Oh, let's make her 10. Frequent flyer miles. <laughs> Frequent flyer miles. You see now we have a highly sophisticated device here. Uh, is Biff the meter? Yeah, that's right. He keeps uh, he keeps count. He keeps count. <laughs> Biff, all right, no meters. One 30 so pound bag of dog food. <laughs> So basically, so yeah, flat right, east, east, uh, we're on the east, going to the west, and we were over the west, we just come back to the east. So That's we'll, why people need me. <laughs> there you go. So we'll see you in a couple hours, eh? Yeah, that's right. great. So, that's so just, we just give you a call. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Thank you. We were heading to the Bamfield Marine Sciences Center, where we'd arranged an interview with the director, Brad Anhold. He set us up in the beautiful, newish, clamshell-designed RIX Center for Ocean Discoveries. It was magnificent. Uh, can you tell us briefly for our viewers, uh, because not everybody knows that we have such an amazing center here, run by five universities? Right, so the place was created in 1970, um, and uh, the National Research Council at the time asked the five Western universities, Alberta, Calgary, Simon Fraser, British Columbia, and Victoria, uh, to start a marine center, a, min, a marine biology station, because there wasn't one on the Pacific coast, and that just seemed to be wrong. So they started looking for a place to put it. Uh, they went up and down the coast. Port Renfrew was one of the possibilities, and so forth. Uh, eventually, they ended up in Bamfield, and um, at the time, there was a building left over from the Canadian Overseas Telegraph Company empty because the Trans-Pacific Cable had been moved all the way to Port Alberni. So the place was here and the community was used to this idea of having a building full of nerds uh, doing interesting things that were um, a little bit unusual and were very welcoming. Um, so the building was here, the land was here, the situation is absolutely amazing in terms of um, the biodiversity and access to all kinds of different habitats. And so the decision was made to purchase the land from COTC and uh, in 1972, uh, the Bamfield Marine Station taught its first courses and has been here ever since. Well, after our little interview with Brad, we headed over to the whale lab. Okay, so uh, we're here today in a really cool building. And uh, we were very lucky yesterday on the boardwalk, we met Phil Lavoie. And you work here, Phil. That's right. That's so right. You, you, you get to play in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I look after the field trip program. Uh, so we bring thousands of kids a year here to the Science Center for both uh, Alberta and BC. Um, yeah, as far as way as past Edmonton, they come out here for a multi-day field trip and spend a lot of their time here in the, the whale lab. This is called the whale lab? That's right. Obviously, well, we'll show you after, but we got some real cool skeletons up here. This actual whale, what is this? It's a gray whale. That's a gray whale? Yeah, it's a skeleton of a gray whale. Okay, we got we got seals here, and we got sea otters. Uh, otters, porpoises, dolphins, uh, river otter. Yeah, and that's a sea otter at the end there. Okay, so in the purpose, so you're saying uh, like students? Yep. Yeah. Or, uh, or is it kids as well? Uh, generally high school. High school? Um, Anywhere from uh, like this fall, we have grade six kids and we have third year university students coming up with wow. a class for, for a multi day trip. So, a multi day, so they'd spend two or three days here? Yeah, yeah we have dorms, cafeteria, they're, good. they're all looked after while they're here. So, they come out as a group and then they just get to hang in the whale lab? And among, they... Yeah, among other places. Uh, we take them out on the water, do trips uh, collecting samples and data, we go to we do, like, the beach trips as well, uh, intertidal exploration. Um, no title. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, once the tide is out, there's tons of cool stuff to see. Yeah, it's a different world. That's right. Yeah. So, okay. And and so they're here. They're down on the water. 
And so, like, why do they come here? What, what is the, the purpose of, of this place? Well, we like to call this, I guess, experiential learning, right? It's, it's hands-on. We get to handle, we have sea creatures over there, live touch tanks. So they come out here and they get to handle sea creatures, learn about them, learn about the ecosystem, the environment, um, stuff that they can't do back at home in a, in a classroom or even a lab setting, right? A lot of their stuff is, you know, usually in a jar or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, or a so, book. Or a book, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we get kids from Alberta coming out here for the first time and holding a, a sea cucumber for the first time, right? They're just all, I don't know, sometimes in awe or inspired, sometimes grossed out, of course, but... Yeah, yeah, you know, well, some way of them look kind of gross, but... Yeah. So, you're getting, actually, some kids are coming out here and seeing the ocean for the first time. Yes. I mean, like, how cool is that? Yeah! How you doing? Good. You want that on the front? The Francis Barkley sailed back into Bamfield, and we loaded our bikes for the return voyage to Port Alberni. Good fortune smiled upon us again as we spotted more whales on the move. It's such a treat to see these mammals in their habitat. Yes, we could have ridden the logging road down from Port Alberni to East Bamfield and back, but why pass up an opportunity to see it all from the water? Seeing an island from the island is one thing, but to see it from the water, well, that's to put it into context. The Queen's Highway. This is the Queen's Highway. Oh, for God's sake. Okay. Three quarters of a mile of boardwalk, decorated with flowers. Three quarters of a mile. So, this is uh, morning two in Banfield. We're down on the boardwalk, and uh, we're kind of hard pushed for restaurants and that in the morning, so uh, Mr. McGlinsky is improvising. Yeah, I'm heavy and awful. You just hid that bag of chips. Come on, show me that bag of chips. It's, 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 it's. <laughs> well, those are the healthy version of chips. There you go. All right. Well, I have an apple. And look what the bull has. That's what he eats for breakfast all the time.